Hello, this is Jessica Fox from Florida Virtual Bookkeeper. And today I want to answer a frequently asked question, and that is how to record deposits when your mentored processor deducts their fees before they transfer your money. This is common with uh, processors such as Stripe, Square, WePay. There are many others where you may charge $100 towards the client, but only $96 and change make it to your bank account. This is because they are deducting their fee before they deposit the money into your bank. If you have been recording the deposits as they come in from the bank feed, then your books are inaccurate. This is especially a big issue if you had recorded the invoice in your accounting software, and then the deposit is not gonna match as a full payment and your records can look like your client is owing you money when that is not the case. So I want to show you two primary ways on how you can make sure that your books are accurate because if you get a 1099K from your mentioned processor at the end of the year, the amount in there is gonna be for the gross. All of the payments that they process, not for the net, the amount deposited from the bank. So to save you the headache at tax time, make sure that your tax return is accurate so you don't have any issues with the IRS and to make sure that your reports are accurate so that you have minimum inf meaningful information and see that you have recorded the correct amounts for everything, you want to make sure that these fees are recorded. So I am here in the QuickBooks online sample file and I am just going to go to the bank feed and let's pretend that one of these deposits is from Stripe, even though it isn't. So let's say this 868.15 is a deposit for a 875 payment that you collected in Stripe. Right now, because this is a sample file, it's trying to suggest a match, but I already created a sales receipt for the correct amount so in this particular case, we're gonna click on find other matches. And here it's gonna be a list of all of the different things that are that it could possibly match with. I created this sales receipt for Bill's Windsurf shop for $875. So I'm going to check that there. If you have created an invoice in QuickBooks, you will just receive the payment for the full amount that the client pays you and post it to on deposited funds, and then it will show on this list. So if you have not already recorded the payment, that's what you would do. Your invoice would also show in here if you had open invoices. You see how here at the bottom, you could also just select it from that list. But I, I am a little bit of a stickler for the details. I like to receive the payment, then do the deposit as that is the most accurate workflow. So step one, you select the full amount that the client paid you. Step two, you will add an adjustment to that deposit for the amount. So in this particular case, it tells me right here that I selected a transaction for 875, but the bank transaction is for a different amount. It tells me the difference right there. So then I can click resolve. And then it gives me a new line and I can then enter the payee will be Stripe. And if you have never entered it before, you will need to set it up as a vendor. If not, you just select a new one. And then the category, I like to call it payment processing fees. Some people like to put it under bank charges. Some like to call it merchant fees. It doesn't matter so much what you call it as long as it makes sense to you and your tax preparer. I generally like to separate this from other bank fees so that when you're running your reports, you know how much it actually costs you to accept credit cards separate from any convenience fees that your bank may charge you. So I'm just gonna create an account called Merchant Fees, or you can call it Payment Processing Fees. This will be an expense account. So if you don't already have that, you will create it as such. The type detail is bank charges, but it will be a different account from other bank charges. So check your chart of accounts to see if you already have one. You may already have one created and that way don't duplicate. 
And then what we're going to do here is we're going to do a negative amount to adjust this deposit. So it's going to be eight minus eight, sorry, 685. And what this will do then is that the total of the deposit will now match the total of the transaction downloaded and the difference is zero. So when I click save, then it has been matched. And as you see, it's off of the bank feed. This is a good approach if you don't have a really high volume. If you're only receiving occasional payments via credit card here and there, then this is a really good way to keep the pro payment processing fee together with the corresponding payments. But what if you are a high volume business and you receive a lot of credit card transactions? This can get really overwhelming because you will have to do it for every single deposit. So the second way that you can handle this is by the use of a clearing account. A clearing account is like a temporary placeholder in your books so that you can post payments to it. Then you can post the fees, take out the amount that was deposited to your bank, and then it should reconcile to zero. So the way that you would do that is in your chart of accounts, you would click on new, and this will be an account type will be bank, and the detail type will be cash on hand, and let's be descriptive. We want to call it what it is. So anybody that looks at it will not have any doubt what it is. So I like to call mine Stripe Clearing. If you're using Square, you will call it Square Clearing. And then you will click Save and Close. So the process for this will be a little bit different because now what will happen is you will record your payments. When you receive a payment from an invoice, so let me just go to the cell center and see what we may have that we can receive a payment for. So we have this invoice right here for 477.50 that's open. I am going to click receive payment and this is where things are different. Instead of posting it to undeposited funds, you will post it to Stripe Clearing. So that way your books will reflect that the client paid you but it's not in your bank yet. So you would just save and close. And then when the bank deposit comes into your bank, so let's go to banking and see if we can find a deposit. It's not gonna match because I obviously didn't exactly prepare for this, but let's say this deposit right here for 408, let's say that this was Stripe. What you would do is that you will post this as a transfer from Stripe Clearing. So that way, this is very important, you take it out of Stripe Clearing, you're not duplicating it. Because if you post it as income from here, then you're posting that income twice, your reports will not be accurate, and you'll pay more tax than you should. So this is very important. You can use the categorize if you don't like using the transfer option. Same thing, the category will be Stripe Clearing, and then we click Add. So now let's go to Stripe Clearing Account and see what's happening there. We can just filter here for the Stripe Clearing and click New Register. So as you can see, we have the payment from the client, which brought the balance up. Then we have the transfer to checking. It shows here as a deposit because it was recorded in the bank feed as a deposit to checking, but it's not a deposit to this account. So don't get hung up by the name here. Look at which column it's in. So then your ending balance here is 69.50. This ending balance should be the amount of the fees. So what you can do is at the end of the month, you go to your Stripe account and you run a payout reconciliation report for the previous year, for the previous month rather. It will then show you the gross payments, the gross fees, if there's any balance left, and you can then post the fees and be able to reconcile that amount. This here should always reconcile to zero. So let's say, I know that this sounds crazy, that maybe it was an international credit card or something, that the fee was $69.50. So we're gonna just record an expense in this account 
and we normally would want to enter it with the date of the deposit. So here I'm off by a date. Let's pretend that this was all on June 16th and then the vendor is Stripe. The payment is $69.50 and the account is merchant fees. So then we click save. Now you see your balance here is zero. When you're doing your monthly bookkeeping, you will reconcile this just like you will reconcile your checking, savings, credit cards, etc. And the balance will be zero. So you will just click reconcile. And then we make sure that we have I just need to get rid of all these pop-ups because QuickBooks thinks this is my first rodeo. So the account is Stripe clearing. The ending balance is zero. The ending date will be the last day of the month that you're reconciling. So in this case, it's going to be June 30th. Then I click Start Reconcile. Nothing is pre-checked because there's no bank feed for this. So then you will just click this little circle here that selects everything. That way you don't have to go down the list one by one. In a perfect world, this will come to zero. If it doesn't, one or two things happen. Either you missed recording a fee, missed recording a deposit, or there is a payment that's still in transit. This can happen, say you, I receive a payment on June 30th, but Stripe has not deposited to my account until July 1st. If that were the case, you will just uncheck that transaction and bring the balance to zero. That's not the case here, but I wanted to let you know how to handle it if you encounter that. Then would you just click finish now and that's done. This is how you ensure that nothing is duplicated, that your fees are report recorded correctly. That way, when you run your profit and loss report, your, your gross amount is gonna be everything before fees and then you will have an expense category right here for your mentioned processing fees. That way you can see your cost of doing business. You can see your accurate income. When you get a 1099K at the end of the year, your tax preparer will be able to match it up without any questions. So I hope that this is helpful. I do want to show you an advanced move if you have a really high volume of Stripe fees and you want to do job costing, know how much you paid in processing fees per client. This requires the use of an app. There are different ways to do it. I am going to show you how to how I do it with HubDuck. I already have HubDuck for my business. It's not a free app, but if you have it, it can do a lot. So HubDuck fetches the Stripe information if you were to connect your account. So you can just click Add Account. You can search for Stripe and you can set up your login credentials and it will import that information automatically. So then when you log on to HopDoc, you can see the payments as they come in and the deposits and the fees and all that stuff. So in this particular scenario, I'm gonna show you how I record the Stripe fees using HopDoc. So I'm gonna exit out of this. This is a sample of an import. It lets me know that it deposited this amount into my bank, but the payment that I received was really this much. And it tells me the fee right here for $5. This is already connected to my QuickBooks Online. It's not connected to the sample file that I just showed you. So you're only gonna see this end. That's why I wanted to show you what the Stripe clearing account looked like before I did this so that you will have an understanding of what happens. So then I can then Go in here and you can, if, it, if this is a list of multiple clients, you can click multiples and then you can put, uh, I think on my account is payment processing fees. You can put the amount of the fee. You can assign a customer. If you have class, if you do class tracking, you can assign a class. So because Stripe deposits in batches, there could be one or 50 payments in one deposit. This is a good way if you need to break it down by client or by class that would give you an additional level of reporting. If you don't care about that, then you can just uh, cancel in here and click on single and you would just select the, the account payment processing fees. You would select classes if you have one. You will select the customer if you have one and then you can click, click on publish and it will 
automatically send it to your QuickBooks Online account and it will have this document here as an attachment. So that gives you an extra level that you can use. Now, this is not the only way to do this. If you are not using Hopdoc, you don't have to sign up for Hopdoc just like this. There are benefits for using Hopdoc for other reasons. Some people use Zapier to automate their Stripe fee processing. That's the topic of a whole nother video. It's a very advanced move, so I'm not gonna get into that detail here, but I wanted to let you know in case you had enough volume where it would make it worth your time to set up this automation to save you time later on. So the bottom line, the most important thing, if you take nothing else out of this video is you wanna make sure that your books show the full payment that you receive and then the fees for your payment processing. Please do not take bank deposits from Stripe in your bank fee and just straight post them to income because that is not correct. I hope that this is helpful. If you have any questions, I am only an email away. Support at floridavirtualbookkeeper.com. Have a great day.